I mean, who doesn't want to marry a Japanese assassin anime female? Who doesn't want that? Hey guys, my name is Ben, and if you've been here before, you'll know I make a lot of anime-style content on this channel. Today, though, I'm doing something a little bit different, a little bit out of my wheelhouse, and instead doing an interview with a former U.S. spy. And I asked him all kinds of questions about his life, as well as spy family, and uh, what you're about to see is the result of that. So guys, sit back, enjoy, leave a like, leave a comment for us in the comment section down below, and without any further ado, I will pass things off to Andy to kick this thing off. So take it away, Andy. My name is Andrew Bustamante, and I am a, co a former covert CIA intelligence officer. And what people don't realize about me is that I spent most of my undercover experience in Asia, where I became an insane anime fan. And now that I'm a dad and I'm back in the United States, I have this awesome opportunity to talk about anime with you, Ben. And that just has me super pumped. Great, Andy. Well, it's great to have you here. So to kick things off, could you tell us a little bit about what it's like being a spy? Yeah, there's not a lot that I can share in detail, man, because a lot of it's still classified. But, uh, but I was a field officer, so I lived and worked undercover. And my job was to collect secrets from foreign governments, from terrorist organizations, from drug cartels, etc. And while I was overseas, while I was working undercover, I actually met my wife, who was also another undercover operative with CIA. And after we, after we married, after we met and married, we then had our first child also undercover. So it became this very uh, weird domestic, but also exciting lifestyle where we were married parents and undercover and trying to like hash out some sort of career uh, being spies around the world. Spy mission. So since Andy literally has a spy family, I wanted to know what his impressions of the show are based just on the name alone. So it's funny that you asked that question. So my brain kind of splits right now. There's the realistic side of it that I don't think many people realize. And that's, that's when I hear spy family, I think of my spy family. So I'm like, I think of parents who do really interesting, important stuff, but then they also have to change diapers and make peanut butter sandwiches and they get, you know, fart jokes at home because that's what spy families really do, just like every other family out there. I joke all the time about how everyone thinks I'm interesting except my daughter. My daughter thinks I'm the most boring dad with the worst dad jokes of all, right? Uh, so that's, what I, that's where my brain immediately goes. But I'm imagining that the mainstream audience, when they think spy family, it must be super sexy. It must be like the kids are all trained ninjas and you know, there's, there's no front door to the house. They probably only have like a secret passageway that comes in through the back uh, the back wall of the, of the chimney or something. I don't know, but those are the two directions that my brain goes right away. When I think of a, of a manga called spy family, I mean, it gets even crazier. Someone's going to have huge cleavage. Somebody's going to, somebody's going to wear almost, you know, some short skirt because it's manga. It's gotta be that way. Yeah. And you're absolutely not wrong right, with what you're thinking about the show. <laughs> But the, to some degree, right, the, the family aspect of spy family is it kind of leans itself to be a little bit more wholesome than what you might expect a show about spies to be. And we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. But before we do, um, as far as anime is concerned, you said you became a big anime fan while you were living in Asia. Is there anything that you're watching now or kind of what was your background with anime before you that you started this interview here with me today. Yeah, you know, I first started getting an as funny as this is. So when I went through when I went through training at CIA, it's a multi-month training and you're on you're alone on a base that's a secret base and there's nothing out there except like every every little hotel room that you're living in, everybody has their own TV and every TV has basic cable. So we had Cartoon Network. And the only way that I could like turn my brain off of spy stuff was literally to go back to my dorm room at eight o'clock at night and turn on Cartoon Network. And about, about nine o'clock at night, that time when I was 26 years old, that's when Adult Swim would start. And that's when all these cool old anime shows would run on Cartoon Network. I mean, Dragon Ball Z was out there, uh, Gundam was out there. There were some really cool things that were playing and I would just watch and for some reason, I really got into it. And then when we started serving and living abroad in Asia, you can't go anywhere in Asia without every bookstore has Japanese manga in English and in Japanese and in whatever the host country's language is, whether it's Chinese or Thai or or Khmer, it's there. Um, so that that became a little bit harder for me because I grew up watching it, not really reading it. That's how I kind of came of age. Uh, and then when we had our own children, so we wanted to introduce them to anime very early. My wife actually lived in Japan when she was a young child. So that was where she got her Japanese language and 
why CIA was interested in her. So now we're just constantly trying to find any anime that exists on Netflix or on Prime that's that's appropriate for the kids. Next, with Andy being a professional spy, I wanted to test his power of deduction, his skill at unraveling the truth. So I thought, why not see if this super spy can pick out the spy from the next image? Let's find out. Oh my gosh, okay. So everything in my Western mind makes me wanna pick the well-dressed dude on the left because that's what a Western spy is. But because it's Japan, it's, it's anime, I have to go with the crazy girl in the middle that has, you know, her hair barrettes that just happen to also look like animal ears. Ah, uh, Andy, you had it right there, man. You were almost right. You had it in the bag. You second guessed yourself. You got this next one though. The next test is what do the other characters do in the show? Anya and Yor, what do they do? Let's see what Andy says. So I'm guessing that because there's a family element here, the, the daughter in the middle has to be someone's daughter. And it would seem appropriate that it would be Lloyd's daughter if Lloyd's the main spy. Uh, I also like the way that the daughter contrasts by looking kind of crazy and unpredictable and Lloyd looks very collected and, and put together. So that could add some really cool like comic relief there. And then the lady on the right, it, assuming she's not the wife, because that just seems like it'd be kind of a boring front cover. I wonder if she's either an analyst or some kind of handler that actually gives Lloyd his assignments. But uh, again, I could be way off on all of it. Not bad, Andy, not bad. This is anime though, so just having a regular kid in a spy support as a mom won't quite cut it for what we're going for. So after I shared that Anya is a psychic and that Yor is an assassin, I quickly broke down the plot of the show for Andy. This was his take on it. So there's so much that I like about this already, man. Just because uh, this is really how a lot of spy operations break down. You've got round, you've got the pri you've got the uh, what we call the objective number one, right? Objective number one is always clandestine, peaceful, quiet, clean, professional, and that's what Lloyd is, right? Like you want you want somebody who's well dressed and dapper and everything else to go in and have a very diplomatic, professional, you know, open, close, bada bing, bada doom, the bada bing, bada boom. The operation is over. Nobody even knows you were there, and then the whole thing. That's why we call it clandestine. It's secret. There's no, nobody even knows it happened. It's that secret. But if, if your primary objective fails, you always have the cleanup person who's right there. And that sounds like it's, what was her name? The, the mother? Your. So if Lloyd fails, yours there to go ahead and just put down the threat so that they can have a, whatever way they want, right? If the nice guy doesn't work, then the cleanup person is there to clean up the mess right away. And that's what your is. And I love the idea of dropping, putting them into a married couple where they do, they understand that they're both on the same page, but they're not really a married couple because just being married is the most painful, complicated thing in the world. Somehow hard enough without having to balance everything else. And my wife and I, we were really able to succeed as an undercover couple because we had total transparency into each other, not just our personal lives, but also our professional lives and what our missions were and everything. And then to drop this little psychic adopted girl in the middle is just brilliant because uh, these two professional secret keepers can't keep a secret anymore. And that's uh, I think that's a really clever. Yeah, it's a great it's a great Japanese way of just causing utter and total chaos in the way they love it. I then wanted to get Andy's perspective on a few scenes from early on in the show and get his impression and feedback on what an actual spy thinks of the antics that this family gets up to. Here's how that went. ものだ。外務大臣の面だという証拠写真。ネガマ。よくやった。これで奴を辞任に追い込める。おい。さあ、約束のものを渡してもらおうか。やっとて、今。やられた。コードネーム、黄昏。男はスパイだった。all right, got it. So I love the disguise element and the uh, the big anime eyes whenever he realized that he was like taken for a fool. Uh, that was pretty clever. I, I, honestly, the thing that I found the most interesting was that they were framing the prime minister over a toupee, because in the real in the real world, in the real world, we call that kind of blackmail. There's four core motivators that all people can all people will spy about. Uh, one is called one is rice it's the acronym is rice the r stands for reward 
The I is ideology. The C is coercion and the E is ego. So the weakest form of why people ever spy is actually coercion, which blackmail is a form of coercion. So it's funny to me because the whole world thinks that blackmail works, but in the real world, blackmail is the weakest, most dangerous, most ineffective form of forcing someone to spy. So, you know, I even have the negatives of his toupee. <laughs> it was just, it's just really funny to think that they would, you know, that anybody would put so much time and effort into an operation for blackmail. シーアンゴコ。ブロデルタ。おかげで大臣は命拾いし、我が国にとってリトなった。さて、早速次の任務だ。地名は彼に近づき、その不穏な動きを探ること。そのためにまず結婚して子供を抑える。あくまでの期限
Like, you know, I know it's anime movement, but whenever you actually flee someone shooting at you, you don't run away. You don't turn your back to the target. That's what Lloyd was doing. But you do run with movement, darting left and right and closer and further away because it's very hard to hit a moving target. All of that was really accurate. As soon as he pulled out a grenade and threw a grenade back, then the accuracy left. Because if you're trying to remain undercover and you're trying to do something in secret, big explosions that you cause and dead bodies that you have created is the worst possible way to stay undercover. So it, that wasn't quite there, but it was very sweet. Uh, the whole ring and the finger that was just gloriously Japanese. Um, and I also like the fact that Lloyd and Yur uh, are of course, you know, beautiful, thin, typical, uh, attractive to the Japanese cultural mindset type of people, where if they were actual Western spies, she would be much more heavy set, and he would be balding. And that would be a, a much more realistic look of your American spies. That's something that people don't realize is that real spies in real life, we don't, we don't look like supermodels. We look like forgettable everyday people, slightly overweight, a little bit chubby, you know, gray in the beard. We don't take great care of our hair. We're not always well kept, but we don't look homeless. We just look forgettable. We look like the guy that you don't remember seeing at the grocery store in the cereal aisle yesterday. I then gave Andy some context on this next clip as he got ready to watch the elegant foragers attempt to get through their first meet and greet at Eden Academy unscathed. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> が<笑> まさかこれは本物の白人群。皆さんは頼みます。夜さん。ヨルソン。<笑> I want to watch this show. This is pretty cool. You could have handled them the same way, or would you have done anything differently? Uh, so I wouldn't. So this is. Uh, through like myth busting for spies, right? We don't help anyone. I don't care if I come across like a little kid drowning in sewage. I'm sorry, little kid. Hopefully somebody behind me is gonna help you, but I'm on mission right now. This is what I have to do to, uh, to achieve my objective. I've been trained to compartmentalize the fact that you're suffering. That's not my problem. So when Lloyd stepped in to help the kid, Lloyd was already a better person than me. And then same with the stampede, right? When the stampede came and then Yur decided that she was going to neutralize the lead cow, uh, that's not what we would have done. We would have been like, oh, stampede's coming. Okay, let's get us out of the way. And then the stampede's just going to do what the stampede's going to do. Um, that's Unfortunately, that's just the way we're trained. And I've, I've seen many a poor per I've left people on the side of the street in highway accidents and whatever else that just, I'm not going to be part of it. I can't afford to have my name and my license plate and my fake ID be recorded on a police record in a time and a place on a certain date just can't do it so we gotta let it happen um and then i also like i mean who doesn't want to marry a japanese assassin anime female who doesn't want that right because it's so sexy with the torn knees and like the intense female face and the in incredible flexibility we all want that in some part of our hidden you know hidden sides but uh and so pressure points are very real uh, but pressure points that you trigger with two fingers are not so real. Pressure points are actually something that you do in a much more, we call it gross motor skill kind of way. You use knuckles, you use, you know, your whole hand, you use your thumbs. But this whole like two finger uh, power jitsu type of thing is, is not very realistic. It's not something we would do. I wouldn't throw a grenade at anybody. I wouldn't help a little boy. Uh, I would, however, pack a change of clothes. I thought that was hilariously real. 
that is just too, too true. We, you'd be shocked at how many people carry an extra tie and they carry like a tied whiteout pen for anything they might get on their shirt. Uh, and we almost always have uh, a dry cleaner or somebody on call with a change of clothes already pre-positioned in the city so that if something goes wrong in on the way to uh, an important meeting, we can, instead of going back to our apartment mid SDR, uh, surveillance detection route. Instead of going back to the apartment, we would go to our pre-positioned dry cleaner, pick up dry clean that we've already had waiting there for a while, change clothes and continue on our mission. So I thought that was brilliant. Seeing these kind of battles take place, that felt very like, oh, of course the assassin character is going to be able to do this. But when they brought out the third change of clothes with the top hat, that's when I knew that this was going to be something special. <laughs> Anytime you see a top hat come out, you know it's going to be something special. All right, Andy, thank you so much for being a part of this video. Tell the people back home where they can find you and learn more about what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So you can find me anytime. I have a top uh, an iTunes top 100 podcast called the Everyday Espionage Podcast. And then the only other thing I would say is uh, if everybody here who watched these clips got to see what these folks were like as spies. So I actually have a quiz on my website where you can find out your actual spy power, your natural born spy ability. Uh, so anybody who wants to find out what kind of spy they would really make in real life can go to everydayspy.com forward slash quiz and take that quiz there. It's 12 questions long and then boom, you'll have all of your lifelong questions. Your, your wondering will be over. I can tell you exactly which of the five core spy categories you would fall in when you go to everydayspy.com forward slash quiz. And otherwise, you can find me anywhere on uh, at Everyday Spy on any social media platform or even on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and guys, let us know what you thought in the comments down below. Leave a question for me or for Andy, anything spy-related, anime-related. We'll do our best to get back to those comments as soon as we can. Again, Andy's stuff is in the description of this video. Please go check him out and give him some love. He deserves it. He's a super nice guy, and a lot of the stuff we talked about in this video didn't get a chance to be included in, in this form of the video that you guys just watched. So what I'm going to do is post a link, again, in the description to an unlisted video where you can watch the full unedited thing and maybe in like a podcast form on your own time later it's about 30 minutes long very interesting and he talks about a lot more than what we covered off here so if you like that click that watch that and then let us know what you think so guys thanks again this is ben signing off talk to you guys in the next video 